How's it, how's it? Your portrait photography is lacking one crucial element, which is why they often are not landing in the way that you wish that they were. It could be your lens choice. It could be the way that you're pro processing the image. It could be the setter. Or is it a very tiny, very imperceptible, but extremely important element that is missing from the session? Portrait photographer Gregory Heisler recounts a story where it was him and the great Arnold Newman in a studio being photographed for an article on mentors. And the photographer asked him just to stand there and was now shouting out instructions of do something. Because Arnold and Gregory were standing, as men are wont to do in a studio, stock still with their arms by their sides, basically doing nothing. So the photographer was barking instructions at them and eventually they sort of went, oh, we'll do this or we'll do that. And from the darkness, from behind the lights, there was, well, nothing. There was no reaction whatsoever. And eventually Gregory you know, leaned past all the, all the lights and he went, that photographer is just sitting there smoking a cigarette, talking on the phone. He wasn't involving Arnold and Gregory in the session. I hope that gives you a clue as to what is probably missing from your portraits. And that is the idea of trust, of involving the subject with the session. So often, you know, we complain about, you know, this, or the subject wasn't, didn't want to do what I wanted them to do and, and stuff like that, and kind of miss the point that, you know, we are not photographing people like they are static objects, like they're a bowl of fruit. We are photographing human beings. And we need to treat them with respect. We need to treat them in a way that we are open to the anxieties they are feeling being photographed. In his wonderful book, 50 Portraits, Gregory Heisler has a introduction, which I think it should be, well, required reading for anybody who has even a passing interest in portrait photography. And in that, he talks about a concept of the bubble of intimacy. Too close. And the person who is being photographed feels, feel intimidated. Too far away. And of course, there is no real connection between photographer and sitter. So it's your job as a portrait photographer to operate within this, this bubble of intimacy where there is a connection between the people being photographed and yourself. It's a very delicate space and you don't want to burst that bubble. And within this book, Gregory talks at length about a number of photographs and the stories behind them. Now, what is different to a lot of photographers who talk about stories is like when we looked at Andy Gotts, you know, he talks about, oh, having chats with the people and stuff like that. Never really about the process, the thought processes that are going on within the mind of the photographer. So often, you know, we start off and we go, oh, I've got this idea. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And you have a very rigid idea about the, the session that's going to happen. And then... You know, like all plans, they don't, they don't really last the first engagement with the enemy. And often, you know, you, you flounder. You're like, what am I doing? And think that there's something going wrong. But photographers like Gregory Heisler will recognize when these sort of things are happening and will use it to their advantage. He recounts a wonderful story about this gentleman on the cover, this, this wonderful, awesome portrait. Um, it's a guy called Louis Sarah. I'm afraid I, my pronunciation of that is, is, is appalling, but he was the, um, the masseuse for Muhammad Ali. And they would, wanted to do a, 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 you know, a photo story on him. And they get to his house and they want to, you know, to, to come inside. And, and he's like, look, I'm terribly sorry, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling very well today. I've got a big infection on my lip and all those sort of things. And Gregory talks us through how he went through the process of arriving at this gorgeous portrait. You know, he said that, you know, first of all, he was, he was a little bit further away, so it would be less dominant, less obvious. And then, you know, it wasn't quite working. And, and then he got a bit closer. And every time he spoke, and when he sat down next to, to Lewis, and Lewis would do this with his hands. And he went, there's the picture. There's, that's how it's working. So they, they used that. And you can see that if Gregory hadn't involved Lewis in the session, in the way that he did, if he just barked out orders, then there would never be that connection 
of of you know of of, of trust that level of trust between subject and photographer so you wouldn't have that connection i hope by now you're starting to see that it is so important that when you are in a portrait session that you have all your ducks in a row you have you know the ideas and stuff like that but you take the time to build some trust to involve the person if what you wanted to do is not what they want to do then you know let's then talk through it Often you will find that different approaches work for different people. And I mentioned Andy Gotts earlier in that, how he's, his approach is to have one set style of his photographs on which then people can sort of, you know, act out or what have you. And Gregory Heisler says, you know, I, that's not for him. He doesn't want to do that. He feels that it's a disservice to have a uniform style, that you're not connecting properly with the human being in front of you. I'm going to stress that word, the human being, the person because that is an actual person who you're photographing, and that he likes to rather have a personalised reaction to the to, to what the you know to, to the personality, and you know again he, he, he talks about this this wonderful image of Hugh Grant. I love it. I love this picture of Hugh Grant. I think it's beautiful, and how it was a spur of the moment kind of thing. Well, I say spur of the moment. They were they had been doing some photographs for, for GQ out in the street, and Hugh had been doing his his actory thing, you know, being hamming it up for the screen and, and riding the bicycle and being all kind of, well, being Hugh Grant, basically. And in between the setup, you know, the change in the lighting setups, that Hugh was in this diner having a cup of coffee and he was deep in thought and just thinking the sort of things. And, and Gregory noticed this. And, and he very quietly, without too much fuss, got up, moved over into one of the, the, the bays near Hugh got his assistant to go outside with, with a continuous light and, you know, just played it very gently through the window and waited for Hugh to give us, or give him rather, this, this wonderful picture. And he actually shot it <laughs> and held on a 4.5. But it's a measure of the photographer. And you can do this once you become adept at it, of recognising a moment, recognising a delicate moment and not popping that popping that, that, that bubble of intimacy. It may seem to begin with, like, how do you, how do you get this? But, you know, you will, you will get there. It, it, it comes. Initially, you're, you're kind of worrying about lots of other things and stuff. And this is why it is so important to understand the technical aspects of the, the, of the session. So you are not constantly thinking about these things in your mind, that you are more readily actually thinking about the opportunities to photograph and this is why I stress so often that you know you really need to kind of understand the technical aspects but then try and put them to one side because that's when you start to really up your game as a photographer as you start making these these exceptional photographs that have connection that they have intimacy all these aspects that are so, so important to making a portrait more than just a, a visual representation of the person who you are photographing. I don't often talk about gear and, and technical process on the channel because I, I, I feel it's a little bit off from, from, the, from the real focus, which is more the, the why. And, but I feel in this case that there is one aspect that Gregory talks about quite a lot in his book that I think is, is extremely helpful. And, and ties in with the idea of, of, of why, and you know, is the, the photograph not with strobes, if you're photographing people in the studio, but with continuous light, if possible. And the reason he does that is because you can see the changes. You can see how the light is reacting straight away. It, it frees up your mind from having to worry about f-stops and, and all sorts of things and, and taking test shots and, and what have you to see what is changing. So, if you are going to dip your toe into the, the water of, of photographing with, with artificial light, then think about continuous light. Gregory Heiser's portraits, I, 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 I simply enjoy. I love looking at them because they are, they're gentle and, and they have a, a quietness to them that I think is, I would say it's lacking in a lot of photography today, but I do find a lot of photographs that are, are, are loud and they're brash and it's a, it's a pleasure to to see a photographer who we you know we talked about trust and intimacy 
is not shouting with his images. I love this. There is a time and a place, sure, for, for loud images, but it's also wonderful to see portraits in the, in the truest sense of the word, that they are portraits of somebody. They are not a rendering, you know, that they are not just somebody. We get an idea, of, we get a sense of the, these people's personality. We get a sense of seeing behind the facade almost. Even if you're not into portrait photography, and in which case, well done for getting this far through the video, right? Take a moment to enjoy them, to, to soak in that quiet, calm, beautifulness of Gregory's photography. A photographer who embraced intimacy wholeheartedly within their photography is Sally Mann. Her photographs of her family are outstanding and exceptionally beautiful and worth certainly, you know, 10 minutes of your time. I put up a video over here. Go and check it out and I know you're going to love it. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.